We praise and honor you this day, and we're so thankful for the fulfillment of prophecies that we can turn to, that we can see throughout history. And as we continue in this journey, we ask you to just guide and direct our path, that you'll open our eyes, that you'll open our minds and our hearts, that we'll be able to see clearly what it is that your word is speaking. Let our eyes see it, let our ears hear it, let it all come to the fulfillment of your purpose. We'll give you praise and honor today as we continue in our pursuit of looking into your prophecies about your Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Calculating the number of fulfilled prophecies in Scripture is difficult for two reasons. And here's what I mean. Not all prophecy is the same. So when most people think of prophecy, they think of predictive prophecy. That is, they think of prophecy that foretells the future. The prophecy predicts what will happen. Another kind of prophecy is called foretelling prophecy. Foretelling prophecy is when Yahuwah speaks a word concerning the present hour. So when we talk about the number of prophecies fulfilled, we are interested in predictive prophecies, prophecies that will be fulfilled in Yahuwah's timing. Yet predictive prophecy is not always easy to identify. For instance, in Psalms 22.1, David, or Daoud, writes, My all, my all, why have you forsaken me? This doesn't initially sound like predictive prophecy. But we see Yahusha alluding to his fulfillment when he cried these same words from the stake in Matthew 27, verse 46. Prophecy shows us that Yahuwah has a plan for this world. By the foretelling of persons, places, and events, even hundreds of years before they are fulfilled, Scripture gives a strong testimony to its own inspiration. See, prophecy shows us that Yahuwah has a plan for this world. By foretelling of persons, places, and events, even hundreds of years before they are fulfilled, Scripture gives us a strong testimony of its own inspiration. See, Isaiah 55, 11, My word that proceeds from my mouth will not return to me empty but it will accomplish what I please, and it will prosper where I send it. Second, not all fulfillments are the same. See, some predictive prophecies concerning Yahushua can easily be understood, but many predictive prophecies about events after Yahushua are difficult to understand. So scholars continue to debate whether these prophecies were fulfilled in the events of the late first century are progressively being fulfilled across history or are yet to be fulfilled in a cataclysmic event immediately preceding the return of Hamashiach. Regardless, we can see that a lot of prophecies in Scripture have been fulfilled with some of the clearest ones about the life and the ministry of Yahushua. The number of fulfilled Hamashiach prophecies is over 300. In addition to Hamashiach prophecies, the Tanakh continually prophesies about events that have happened. Yashirel's future into exile, nations that will be destroyed, Yashirel's kingdom being restored, and so on. <clears throat> These predictions further demonstrate that we can trust Scripture as truly inspired by Yahuwah. Scripture itself gives the purpose of prophecy. Remember the former things long past, for I am Yahuwah Alhim, there is no other. I am Yahuwah, and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient time things which have not been done. 
Isaiah 46, verse 9 through 10. Did you know that Yahusha fulfilled 27 Hamashiach prophecies in one day? And these are some of the 300 Hamashiach prophecies that he has fulfilled through his birth, life, and resurrection. Isaiah 53, 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of Yahuwah been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him, stricken him, smitten by Yahuwah, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And Yahuwah has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shear is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and he and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death because he had done no, uh, no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased Yahuwah to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahuwah will prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul, and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his soul until death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. We also see Hamashiach in the Psalms, in Psalms 2. This was penned by King Dawood about 1000 BCE. And he introduces the Hamashiach in this way. The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against Yahuwah and against his Mashiach saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in the Shemayim laughs. Yahuwah scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them with his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on, uh, on Zion, my Kadosh mountain. I will proclaim Yahuwah's decree, he said to me. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me and I will make nations your inheritance, the end of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, your kings, be wise, be warned. Your rulers of the earth, serve Yahuwah with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Baruch are all who take refuge in him. Psalms 2, verses 4 through 12. We see here that Yahuwah calls Hamashiach my son. Yahuwah identifies his Hamashiach as his son. 
This is therefore where the term son of Alhim originates and is thus another equivalent term for Mashiach. Hebrews have historically been known to be waiting for their Mashiach. Why? Because the Tanakh prophesied that he would come. Herod the Great and HaMashiach. Herod the Great was a king of Judea or Yehuda from 37 BCE to 4 BCE, when appointed by the Roman Empire after its Senate equipped him with an army to fight off the, the, the Parthian invasion. Prior to the invasion, he had been governor over Galilee since 47 BCE. Below is the reaction of Herod the Great in 4 BCE, when the Magi from the east came looking for Hamashiach part of that nativity story. But notice the proceed Hamashiach, the precedes of Hamashiach. When King Herod heard of this, he became very agitated, and so did everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the head Kohimim, the, the priests and the Torah teachers of the people, and asked them, where will the Hamashiach be born? Matthew 2, verses 2 and 3. Uh, three to four. The idea of Hamashiach was accepted between Herod and his religious advisors and is used here without referring specifically to Yahuwah or to Yahusha. Why? Because the Hebrews had been reading Psalms 2 for hundreds of years before Herod the Great was born. Hamashiach and the son of Elohim. At his trial, Yahusha is brought before the high priest who asked him. The high priest said to him, I put you under oath by the living Alhim. Tell us if you are Hamashiach, the son of Alhim. You have said it yourself, Yahusha answered. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of Shemayim. Matthew 26 verses 63 and 64. The Hamashiach in the Tanakh. See, prophecy is like a lock in a key system. The fact that the Tanakh explicitly predicts a coming Mashiach makes it stand unique across the vast sea of literature that has been produced through history. It is like a lock. Locks are designed in a certain shape so that only a specific key that matches the lock can unlock it. In this way, the Tanakh is a lock with specifications that become more and more precise through the prophetic uh, passages, such as Abraham's sacrifice, Adam's beginning, and Moshe's Pesach. This raises a Hebrew question. Is Yahusha the matching key that unlocks the Tanakh? Yeshayahu, Yermiyahu, Zakaryahu, Daniel, and so on, specified the details forming the lock for Hamashiach. These specifications have implications for us living 2,000 years later. The use of the title Hamashiach to signify a coming ruler, a son of Alhim, according to Psalms 2, opened the door for related themes that later books in the Tanakh developed. Isaiah, 750 BCE, initiated this with the branch of Yahuwah. Yeshayahu and the branch. See, Yeshayahu wrote in the first temple period during the, the Dawit dynasty, in his day, CA 750 BCE, the dynasty and the kingdom were corrupt. And Yeshayahu pleaded that the king returned back to Alhim with the practice and the spirit of the Mosaic law. But Yeshayahu knew that Yasharel would not repent, and so he also prophesied that she would be destroyed and the royal dynasty would end. Isaiah 3 details this coming judgment. But then the book changes its tone and foresees in the day the branch of Yahuwah will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land will be the pride and the joy of their survivors in Yasharel, Isaiah 4, verse 2. He does not give much detail about this coming branch, but a little further on, he explains what he foresaw with a specific metaphor, 
or image of the royal dynasty, picturing it like a great tree. This tree had its root in Yesi, the father of King Daud. And on Yesi, the dynasty was started with Daud. And from his successor, Solomon, the tree continued to grow and to develop. Now, Daud's dyna uh, royal dynasty pictured as a tree from Yesi, the, the, who was the father of Daud. Now, first, a tree, then a stump, then a branch. Yeshiyahu wrote that this tree would be cut down, reducing it to a stump. Here is how he pictured this tree, which then he turned into a riddle of a stump and a branch. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The Ruach of Yahuwah will rest on him. The Ruach of wisdom and understanding. The Ruach of counsel and of power. The Ruach of knowledge, according to Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2. Dawood's dynasty pictured as a stump of Jesse. The cutting down of this tree happened about 150 years after Yeshayahu in 586 BCE, when the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem and dragged his people and king to Babylon. Yeshi was the father of King Daud, and so was the root of Daud's dynasty. The stump of Yeshi was therefore a metaphor to the coming shattering of Daud's dynasty. The branch, coming from Daud, possessing wisdom. See, pictured as a shoot from the dead stump of Yesi. But this prophecy also looked further into the future than just the cutting down of the kings. See, Yeshayahu predicted that though the stump would look dead, as stumps do, one day in the future, further future, uh, a shoot known as the branch would emerge from that stump, just like shoots can sprout from tree stumps. But this branch is referred to as him. So Yeshayahu is talking about a specific man coming from the line of Daud after the dynasty would be cut down. And this man would have such qualities of wisdom, power, and knowledge. It would be as if a, the very Ruach of Alhim would be resting on him. This was a prophecy of the coming of the Mashiach using the theme of a branch. Yermiyahu and the branch. So Yermiyahu, in historical timeline with other writers of the Tanakh, like a signpost laid down by Yashiyahu in history, it was only the first in a series of signposts that would uh, that develop this theme of the coming branch. Yermiyahu, living about 150 years after Yashiyahu, when Daoud's dynasty was being cut down before his very eyes, wrote, The days are coming, says Yahuwah, when I will raise a righteous branch of Daoud. He will reign as king and succeed. He will do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Yahuda will be saved. Yasharal will live in safety, and the name given to him will be Yahuwah Tisendenu. Yahuwah, our righteousness, according to Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6. See, the branch of Yahuwah, our righteousness, what will this branch be called? He would be called Yahusha, who will, be, will also be our righteousness. As we saw in Abraham, the problem for humans is that we are corrupt, and so we need righteousness. In naming the branch Yahusha, our righteousness, Yermiyahu hints that people in his future would be needed, would, would, uh, would get needed righteousness from Yahuwah through Yahusha. But how would this be done? Zechariah Yahuwah provides the answer as he developed this theme of the coming branch further, prophesying even the name of Hamashiach. So we saw how Yashiyahu began the prophetic theme of the branch. From the fallen dynasty of Dawood, possessing wisdom and power was coming. Yermiyahu followed up by stating that this branch would be known as Yahusha. Zakar Yahuwah and the branch. See, Zakar Yahu or Zakar Yah 
returned after the Babylonian exile to rebuild the temple. Zechariah lived 520 BC, just after the Hebrew people returned to Jerusalem from their first exile. And at that time, they were rebuilding their destroyed temple. The high priest then was, uh, was a man named Yahusha, or in the English translation, Joshua. And he was restating or restarting the work of the priest. Zechariah, the prophet, was partnering with his colleague, Yahusha, the high priest, and Zerubbabel, the political leader, in leading the Hebrew people. And here's what Yahuwah, through Zechariah, said about this Yahusha, or Joshua, if you will. Listen, O oh, high priest Yahusha, and your associates seated before you, who are men symbolic of things to come. I am going to bring my servant the branch, says Yahuwah Almighty, and I will remove the sins of this land a single day. Zechariah 3, verses 8 and 9. The branch. Stated by Yeshayahu 200 years beforehand, continued by Yermiyahu 60 years later, Zechariah develops the branch further. The branch is now also called my servant, the servant of Yahuwah. In some ways, Zechariah's colleagues, the high priest Yahusha in Jerusalem at 520 BCE, was symbolic of this coming branch. But how? It says that in a single day, the sins will be removed by Yahuwah. But how would that happen? The branch uniting priest and king. So to understand, we need to know that the roles of priest and king were strictly separated in the first temple period. None of the Dawuit kings could be priest, and the priests could not be kings. The priest's role was to mediate between Yahuwah and man by offering animal sacrifices to Yahuwah for atonement of sins. And the king's job was to rule with justice. Both were crucial, but were distinct. And this separation of role was cemented in that priests could only be Levites descended from Aaron, while the kings were from Dawu's line within the tribe of Yehuda. Yet, Zechariah wrote that in the future, the word of Yahuwah came to me, take the silver and gold and make a crown and set it on the head of the high priest Yahusha. Tell him, this is what Yahuwah Almighty says. Here is the man whose name is the branch and he will branch out from his place and build the temple of Yahuwah. And he will be clothed with majesty and will sit and rule on his throne and he will be a priest on his throne, and there will be harmony between the two. Zechariah 6, verses 9 to 13. Here, against all previous rules, the high priest Yahusha in 520 BCE was to put on the kingly crown symbolic as the branch. Remember that Yahusha was symbolic of things to come. Yahusha, the high priest, in putting on the kingly crown, he foresaw a future uniting of king and priest into one person, a priest on the king's throne. And furthermore, Zechariah prophesied that Yahusha was the name of the branch. What did this mean? The name of Yahusha. To understand, we need to review the history of Tanakh's translation. The original Hebrew Tanakh was translated into Greek in 250 BCE by Hebrew rabbis and is today known as the Septuagint. Still widely used, we saw how Hamashiach was first used in the Septuagint, and we now follow that same analysis through the Masoretic Hebrew and the Greek Septuagint for Joshua. See, Hebrew and Greek roots of Joshua comes from the Hebrew name Yahusha, which is spelled with a Yod, a He, a Uhua, a Shin, and an Ayin. So you can see that Yahusha in an English transliteration of the original, written in Abri, or Paleo Hebrew, if you will, the Hebrew name Yahusha 
seen written here in the modern Hebrew with the yod Hey, the Ua, the Sheen, and the Im. Well, we see in the quadrant number one, it shows the Hebrew Yahusha as it was first written. It's mistranslated to Joshua in English, in my opinion, because there's no J in Hebrew. So, but that's not, that doesn't mean anything. It's still spelled the same way in the Hebrew. But Yahusha in ancient Abri Hebrew is the same as the Joshua in the English Bibles. It's the same name that was prophesied as the branch. So Yahusha equals Joshua, who equals the branch in Hebrew, English, in a linear Masoretic text. Both Yahusha and Nazareth and Yahusha, the high priest of 520 BCE, had the same name. Yahusha in their native Hebrew. So is Yahusha of Nazareth the branch? Is this a prediction made in 520 BC that the name of the coming branch would be in English terms, Yahusha, pointing directly to Yahusha of Nazareth? See, Yahusha of Nazareth is well known outside the Gospels. The Hebrew Talmud, Josephus, and <coughs> excuse me, all other historical writers wrote about Yahusha, both friendly and hostile, falsely referring to him as the Aramaic name Yeshua, or often as the Hamashiach. So his name was not invented in the Gospels. But Zechariah predicted this name 500 years before he lived. So only Yahusha of Nazareth is from the stump of Yesi, since Yesi and Daud were his ancestors. See, Yahusha possessed wisdom and understanding to a degree that sets him apart from others. His shrewdness, his poise, and insight portrayed in the Brit Hadashah continues to impress both critics and followers. His power through miracles in the Gospels is undeniable. One may choose not to believe them, but one cannot ignore them. The Yahusha fits the quality of possessing exceptional wisdom and power that Yahshiyahu predicted would be one day come from this branch. So now think of the life of Yahusha of Nazareth in the Gospels. He claimed to be a king, the king of kings, in fact. But what, did, but what he did while on earth was actually priestly. The priest job The priest job was to offer acceptable sacrifices to Yahusha on behalf of the Hebrew people. The death of Yahusha in the Brit Hadashah was significant in that it also was an offering to Yahuwah on at our behalf and the sins of the land were thus literally removed in a single day, as Zachariah had predicted. So the day Yahusha died and paid for all sins, his, in his death he fulfilled the requirements as priest. Even while he is mostly known as Hamashiach or the king, thus as Zachariah prophesied, he did bring the two roles together, priest and king. So there's a double fulfillment of prophecy that we need to discuss. See, in double reference prophecy, the first fulfillment is usually temporal, whereas the ultimate fulfillment may be spiritual or eternal. In double reference prophecy, part of the prophetic message may be fulfilled close at hand, and that fulfillment in turn becomes another prophecy. See, prophecy has no sooner become history than history in turn becomes prophecy. So in double reference prophecy, two or more prophecies may be grouped together in one area of vision, although they are really at different distances in fulfillment. So concerning the Babylonian captivity, the event of the day of Yahuwah, the return from Babylon, the worldwide dispersion of Yasserel and their future regathering from all the corners of the earth. 
So I see that certain prophecies contain a, ful a fullness of meaning, which is not exhausted by the event to which they most obviously and literally refer. So a prophecy which had a partial fulfillment at a time not remote from its utterance may find its chief fulfillment in the future. So since the principles of Yahuwah's administration find ever recurring and enlarging illustrations in history, prophecies which have already had a partial fulfillment may have a whole cycles of fulfillment yet before them. And the same prophecies frequently have a double meaning and refer to different events, the one near and the other remote, the one temporal and the other spiritual or perhaps eternal. So the prophets, thus having several events in view, their expressions may be partially acceptable to one and partially to another. And it is not always easy to make the translation or transition rather. So what has not been fulfilled in the first must, we must apply to the second. And what has already been fulfilled may often be considered as typical of what rem remains to be accomplished and may assume any one of several forms. So future events placed side by side in prophecy may have great gaps between them in their fulfillment. In double reference prophecy, the first fulfillment of the prophecy usually is found in a person or event close in time to the prophetic utterance. But in double reference prophecy, the first fulfillment is usually only partial fulfillment of the total prophetic message. So in double reference prophecy, the ultimate fulfillment is usually found in the person of Hamashiach or the affairs of his kingdom. 27 Hamashiach prophecies that are filled in one day. Number one, the portrayal of the Hamashiach by his own friend. In Psalms 41.9, even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Mark 14, 10. Then Yehuda, or Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray him to them. And having heard, they rejoiced and promised to give him money. And he was seeking how he might deliver him up conveniently. The second, Hamashiach forsook by his disciples. Zechariah 13, 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion, says Yahuwah of hosts. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Then I will turn my hand against the little ones. Mark 14, 50. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Yehuda, or Judas, came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priest and the scribes and the elders. Now the portrayer had given them a sign saying, the one will kiss, uh, the one I will kiss is the man, seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up and to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Yahushua said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. The third, the price paid for the betrayal. We see in Zechariah 11, verse 12. Then I said to them, if it is agreeable to you, give me my wages, and if not, refrain. So they weighed out for my wages 30 pieces of silver. Matthew 26, verse 14 and 15. Then one of the 12 called Yehuda, or Judas Iscariot, went into the chief priest and said, what will you give me, and I will deliver him. And they him uh, they gave him 30 pieces of silver the fourth how the money of the portrayer would be used we see in zechariah 11:13 and yahuwah said to me throw it to the potter that princely piece 
they sent on me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and I threw them into the house of Yahuwah for the potter. Matthew 27, verses 3 to 10. Then Yehuda, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elder saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to you, to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the 30 piece, uh, the, 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 the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and he hung himself. But the chief priest took the 30 pieces of silver and said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury because they are the uh, because it is the they are the price of blood and they consulted together and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day then was fulfilled what was spoken by Yahu the prophet saying and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of him who was pierced, whom they of the children of Yasserel priced, and gave them for the potter's field as Yahuwah directed them. I think we can see that there's a theme here that Yahuwah has spoken in advance in prophecy, and that he is fulfilling or confirming in the Brit Hadashah and some to very striking detail. The fifth, the torture of Hamashiach, which we see in Isaiah 50, verse 6. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. Matthew 27, verses 26 to 30 says, Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scored Yahusha, he delivered him to be crucified. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. Number six, shame, prosecution, and dishonor. Psalm 69.19 says, and you know my report, or reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before me. You know my reproach. You know my shame and my dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Reproaches have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst they gave me sour wine to drink. Matthew 27, verse 28. And they stripped him and they put a scarlet robe on him. Matthew 27, 34, you know my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Reproaches have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none. And for companies, but there was none. They gave me poison for food and for my thirst, they gave me sour wine to drink. Number seven, the smitten shepherd, prophesied in Zechariah 13, 7. Smite the shepherd and will spread the sheep. Matthew 26, 31, and Yahushua said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Number eight, the division of his garments found in Psalms 22, 18. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. John 19, verse 24 says, They said therefore among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Number nine, Hamashiach would not open his mouth at his trial. Isaiah 53, verse 7 says, And he was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shear is silent. So he opened not his mouth. 
Matthew 27, verse 13 and 14 goes on to say, Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word, so that the governor marveled greatly. Number 10, how Mashiach's crucifixion. Spoken of in Isaiah 53, verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom or peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24 says he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Matthew 18, 17 says, This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Yasayahu. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. John 19, 16, Then he will deliver him to them to be crucified. So they took Yahusha and led him away. The 11th is Hamashiach's thirst. We see it spoken of in Psalm 69, 3 says, I'm weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for my Alhim. John, after this, John, uh, I'm sorry, uh, John 19, verse 28, says, after this, Yahusha, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. 12 is the bitter drink that they gave him in Psalm 69, 21, where it says, They also gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. And we see in John 19, 29, Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, which is also vinegar, put it on hyssops, and put it to his mouth. 13. People staring at Hamashiach on a stake. We see in Psalms 22, 17, I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. Matthew 27, 36, sit down and they kept watch over him there. 14, we see Hamashiach's hand and feet pierced. Described in Psalms 22, 16, for the dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. And in Matthew 27, 35, then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They div divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. I guess I put that in the wrong spot. But he was pierced in 15, which we see in Zechariah 12, 10. And I will pour on the house of Daud, or David, and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Ruach of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and grieves for him as one grieves for his firstborn. In Psalms 22, 16, for dogs have surrounded me, and the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded, or he was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And we see in John 19, 34, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. 16 is the blood and the water that came out. We see in Psalms 22, 14, I am poured out like water, and all of my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. And John 19, 34, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately the blood and the water came out. 17, the scorning and the hatred of the crowd. Psalms 22, verses 7 and 8, and all those who see me ridiculed me. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying he trusted in Yahuwah. let him rescue him let him deliver him since he delights in him matthew 27 verse 41 43 likewise the chief priests also mocking with the scribes and elders said he saves others himself he cannot save if he is the king of yasserel let him now come down from the stake and we will believe him 
He trusted in Elohim. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of Elohim. Number 18, the Lamb of Elohim, Isaiah 53, 7, spoke. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a, slam, a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shear is silent. So he opened not his mouth. And in John 1, 29, the next day, Yahukanan saw Yahusha coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim who takes away the sins of the world. The 19th prophecy that was fulfilled by Hamashiach as the intercessor of sinners, Isaiah 53, 12. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Luke 23, 34, then Yahushua said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast the lots. Number 20, the lonely crying Hamashiach and intense time of his suffering. Psalm 22, 1, my all, my all, have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me? Why are you so far from helping me? And far from the words of my groaning. He's crying out. We see in Matthew 27, 46, crying out. And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice, saying, Ali, Ali, Lama, Shabaka, Dami. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 21, the disfigurement caused by the brutality of the soldiers, which Isaiah 52, 14, just as many were appalled at him, his appearance was disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form was marred beyond human likeness. John 19, 5, then Yahushua came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, behold the man. John 19, 14, now it was the preparation day of Pesach and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Hebrews, behold your king. The 22nd, the cry of triumph and victory of Hamashiach found in Psalms 22, 31. They will come and declare his righteousness to the people who will be born, that he has done this. John 19.30, so when Yahushua had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished, and bowing his head, he gave up his root. 23, Pesach, lamb without any broken bones. Exodus 12.46, in one house it shall be eaten. You shall not carry any of the flesh outside the house, nor shall you break one of its bones. Psalms 22, 17, I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. John 19, verse 33, 36, but when they came to Yahushua and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. For these things were not done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. The 24th, Hamashiach placed with the transgressors like a sinner, even though he was sinless. Isaiah 53, verse 9, And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Isaiah 53, 12, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. And Matthew 27, verses 57 through 60 says, When it was evening, there came a rich man from Armethia, named Yosef, who himself was a disciple of Yahusha. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Yahusha, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. So Yosef took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut into the rock. Then he rolled a great stone across the entrance to the tomb, and he went away. Number 25, 20, Hamashiach would be caught off. He would be killed, but not by his own fault. Daniel 9, 26. 
And after the 62 weeks, Hamashiach shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood and till the end of the war, uh, the desolations are determined. Isaiah 53, 5 and 6 it goes on and says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have been gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And Yahuwah has laid on him the iniquity of us all. John 11, 49, 52. And one of them... Cypass, being high priest that year, said to them, You, knowing nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and not that the whole nation should perish. Now, this he did not say on his own authority. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahusha would die for the nations, and not for that nation only, but also that he would gather together in one, the children of Elohim who were scattered abroad. Number 26, the fight against Hasatan and the triumph of Hamashiach. This is the oldest prophecy about Hamashiach in the Torah. We find it in Genesis 3.15. And I will put an enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. John 12 verses 30 and 33 says, Yahusha answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This he said, satisfying or signifying by what death he would die. John, uh, 1 John 3 8 goes on and says, And the one who practices sin has been sinning from the very start. This is why the Son of Yahuwah was revealed to destroy the works of Hasatan. 27. Hamashiach would be buried in a tomb of a rich man. We see in Isaiah 53 9, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich his death because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. And we see in Matthew 27 and 57 through 60, now when the evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Yosef, who himself had also become a disciple of Yahusha. And this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Yahusha. Then Pilate commanded that the body be given to him. And when Yosef had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb which he had uh, hewn out of the rock and he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and then he departed and then we see in John 20 verses 30 and 31 these scriptures were written that you may believe that Yahusha is Hamashiach and truly Yahusha did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you may believe that Yahusha is Hamashiach, the son of Yahuwah, and that believing you may have life in his name. John 20, verses 30 and 31. And then John, 1 John 20, verses 22 through 24 goes on to say this. Who is the liar but he who denies that Yahusha is Hamashiach? This is the anti-Mashiach. He who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. Hallelujah. Brother Rod, are you with us? All righty. Shabbat shalom, brother. Shabbat shalom, praise God. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Um, <clears throat> again, beautiful message, uh, continuation from last week. Um, and you know, this full, this whole day is is going to be about 
understanding scripture and poetry as we're going to go into it again this afternoon. But um, you definitely just uh, ushered the waters of Shalom right into what's going to be talked about uh, this, this afternoon. Um, you know, Psalm says that the, the scriptures in full are about me, you know. Uh, scripture uh, from cover to cover is about the fall of man and how his fall redeems him back to the father who made him. How does that happen? You know, it says that the redemption is in the blood, it tells us in Leviticus. How do we atone for sin? Uh, there has to be a savior and all scripture, all scripture <laughs> points to that savior, you know, and um, it's beautiful, the language of um, prophecy. And, and I think you hit the nail on the head when you said some things you can see right clearly, right? But there are other things that you have to stop, take your time and read through and understand because the language speaks clearly to a lot of the things you spoke about today, it's especially considering the branch, the root. And I think that's 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 also part of the theme for later on. But <clears throat> when when those words from the prophets in the prophecies were spoken to Israel, to Judah, they knew exactly what the prophet was talking about, right? The prophets sometimes didn't necessarily know what they were saying. They were speaking what Yah told them. So it's important that we understand all those things. And, you know, I think this is a beautiful time, you know, in our fellowship specifically for the three elders as we're watching what's going on in our world and we're making sure that um, <clears throat> not only that we're prepared and ready that, but also that we're getting um, our flock, you know, prepared and, 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 and able to answer these questions that are arising, you know. So praise you for the message and thank you for your study because I know it took a lot. Trust me, I know. So praise you, brother. Hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> you know, there is a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, I hate to put it in terms uh, as false teachings, uh, false witnesses, you know, trying to discredit Mashiach, uh, who he is, you know, even the, the, the Brit, Hadasha, which is really a lot of what inspired uh, these, these studies, um, because we found that it's imperative that if this message is going out there, that we have to have it settled within our minds, what scripture says, uh, what it's leading us to is our understanding of you know, uh, did, did, did Yahushua really fulfill all of this? You know, the, 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 way, the way the prophecies are outlined and the way that the, that the prophecies are laid out, you know, they're, like I said, it's like a lock and a key. You know, you can't, if you don't have the right key, you're not getting in there and you're not going to unlock that Torah. You know, you're not going to be able to really see. And only one, only one chosen one can fulfill all of those things which make all of those in a key you know it's got all the little teeth that line up that make it exactly fit that lock which is that torah so if if, if there's only one that's going to have that key you know and nobody else in history can can fulfill what has been already fulfilled and i personally cannot foresee another time in history being able to be had where a Messiah can actually come and fulfill all of those prophecies that have been spoken, because there's too many that are in there that that have to be used in like the the the, the destroying of the temple and those type of things, which in the in the disbandment of the the, the priest and the in the Levitical priesthood, all of those things which were prophesied already happened at a point in time which I can't foresee ever happening again in that manner, which is spoken of. We read today how the descriptions of what took place with this Mashiach happened, you know, how he was tried and how he was whipped and how he was done, the things that he was done to him that were prophesied in well in advance by hundreds of years, you know, and when it, and it had to happen at a certain period of time, according to Daniel and, and, and stuff. So, you know, we have to pull this back and look at things in reality. You know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there. I would not say, you know, that 
you know, there, the, this New Testament's a fraud. That Paul's a fraud. He's a false prophet. Quite honestly, if you studying this stuff from a Hebraic perspective, I don't see those discrepancies. I really don't see them. You know, when we breaking things down, nothing's sticking out like it, like you would think it would be if it was an error. You know, if this stuff was written down by a man, that's another thing that I have to look at. Is is it possible that these Romans could know these Hebrew scriptures so well that they could forward something to this to this detail and have it this accurate? I mean, really, you have to think about this is a whole different culture, a whole different language, you know, and I'm sure that all of these details may not have been spoken to the Romans that may have been playing this trick on us. You know what I'm saying? You would have to know the Hebrew Tanakh in great detail to be able to pull these things out that we see today that are confirming him. You know, that's just that's just my stance on this. And I you know, I'm looking forward to, to more discussion from Brother Jadiel with your hand up. So let us know what you got for us, brother. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yes. Shabbat Shalom. All right. So you you and Rod literally just touched on on something very important. Um, <laughs> um, the, the idea of, of prophecy is is not not that they have not happened but that they have a greater reality and when it says fulfill it's talking about something being brought to the forefront or brought to reality there's a lot of description that pertains to the messiah that pertains to other prophets that will also pertain to yah's people who will be treated the same way you know so when we look at scripture we will be able to say this is fulfilling with us too. You know, the way that they treated Messiah, Messiah said it clearly. They hated me, they're gonna hate you. They persecuted me, they're gonna persecute you. They betrayed me, they're gonna betray you. He tells us in Matthew 24, your father, your mother, your brother, your your, your daughter, they will give you up. So so we have to recognize the emphasis on the full reality, on the full emphasis. There's some things that cannot be, have been fully fulfilled with the person that said they experienced it. You know, David said he went to the grave. While he was talking, he said, I went to the grave. <laughs> you know, he said, I was flooded with, with death. You know, those are, those are, uh, just like what, what you read, um, Brother Rick, you read about Caiaphas and how Caiaphas projected something that he didn't even know was happening. And, and like what Brother Rod just mentioned also, like they didn't always know what they were saying. Daniel needed Gabriel to help him understand prophecy multiple times. Um, you know, so so the idea that every single person knew that this was talking about this specific thing when they were inspired is not true. King Saul, when he went to Ramah to go look for um, David, what happened? It says the Ruach fell on him and he couldn't control his prophesying. Does that mean he was the understanding of all the wisdom that was coming out of his mouth? Absolutely not. But when the Ruach came on him, he spoke words that professed Yah's Yah's truth, Yah's existence, Yah's character. That doesn't mean he understood it. Look at what Saul did afterwards. You know, so the I and, and, and one thing I want to also point out is that everything that was said was not necessarily prophecy, but things that was that was done. Things that were, it was these were experiences, things that were actually done is what's repeating. Just because it says this is fulfilling doesn't mean someone foretold it things were done david was betrayed he cried out elohim uh, you know eli eli you know why have thou forsaken me these are things that were done exodus we're talking about the second exodus right these are things that were actually done that's going to replay itself in history that's what makes it prophecy because things replay in history now there are definitely things that cannot fit on anyone else but Messiah. And this is this is where he brings the reality of, of many of those things in his own life that cannot be fulfilled in anyone else's life, 
<coughs> it is only brought to reality in his own life, such as you mentioned, Brother Rick, with the Passover lamb and, and the things like that. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting. Even the past, like the Passover lamb for the penalty of sin cannot be replicated by another person. It cannot be replicated. Even if we are living sacrifices, even if we are lambs led away to the slaughter as well, it doesn't mean that we are, by our stripes, peep, other people are healed. By our death, other people's penalty is removed. That's, you know, it's it, these are the type of explanations that are given about prophecy that to discredit the New Testament, as, as you mentioned. And it's just silly to, to place a, many of these prophecies 100% on a man, on another man, that wasn't sent to specifically perform those those um uh that mission you know so we have to pay close attention to the prophecies and recognize the criteria for a prophet and then the prophecies are extra Th those are the things that solidify a lot of things that that we see already you know so i think that i think that this is definitely needed at this time there's a widespread of of ideas of of how the messiah is not the messiah and 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 people are taking this very lightly i think that is not a bad thing if you're investigating whether he is truly the messiah but you have to heed the warning that uh brother rick read in in first did you read in first john in first john where it says that this is how the ruach speaks that the Messiah, that Yahushua came in the flesh. And anyone who does not profess that Yahushua came in the flesh is anti-Messiah. So it's not necessarily, hey, don't investigate, don't check these things out, but tread softly. Do not just be so quick to disregard the son of Yah. Don't, don't move so quick to dis, even if it's not about Messiah, don't move so quick to tr to dish away the Torah or to dish away certain commandments or to dish away anything from scripture. Tread extremely softly because these things belong to Yah. And to throw away something that belongs to Yah, New Testament tells us that you are, if you throw away these things, you are throwing him away. If you deny what he is doing, you deny him. If you deny his Ruach's inspiration, you're denying him. If you reject what he is doing, you're rejecting him. So be very careful when investigating not to quickly toss away something that's actually true. This is what they did in Messiah's time. And he referred to it as blasphemy of the Ruach. So we have to be very careful to, to and uh, the B prophet Isaiah said to call what is evil good and what is good evil to take what is good and to say that it was done by evil intentions and if it is yah you are saying that yah presented this in evil in an evil intent so just be very careful when looking at the scriptures um i i, I was i i was told um a very inspiring word and when when regards to the son of yah in regards to studying the deepness of the son of Yah, take your shoes off because you're treading on <laughs> on holy ground. Um, you don't you don't just open up the Bible and just recklessly read like it's some regular book. You come to it with reverence and with respect, and you pray for the Ruach to reveal to you and re and and believe that He will guide you to understand. But you don't be so quick to toss things away and don't be so quick to accept things either yahuwah wants you to test him because he knows that he's gonna he's gonna prove himself true you know so he doesn't have to worry about you testing him but don't don't be so fast to accept it because you may not really be getting what he's actually offering you you know so that's 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 what i want to make sure i say well, hallelujah that's some good words of wisdom <clears throat> You know, I think that we have to tread lightly because we, you know, we don't want to cross that line, you know, even if you have suspicions about something. And believe me, I was at this crossroad at one point in my walk in the beginning. You know, this this the, this really can destroy a believer. 
And I want to bring that caution because I've seen it destroy people's lives. They completely walked away from their faith. And now they're living in the world and doing things that are contrary. You know, so when you go hearing these type of things, you have to use wisdom and caution and do a lot of studying and, and proving. And but the key, which you said, Brother Jadiel, is you need to pray and you need to ask the Ruach to, to reveal that you need him to guide you in this. And if something sticks out as unusual, that's when you're going to start looking. But you can't start discounting right away and saying this is all false. And and uh, because we see what it says, and it, even if you don't believe it, there's a serious warning there. If it is real, then then you've crossed over, and it's going to be a very difficult road to come back from if you allow yourself to go down that path. You know, so just use caution and wisdom for sure when you come across people that are promoting such uh, these type of doctrines and believe me there's going to be all kinds of crazy doctrines out there that are going to come at us you know to try to trip us up to try to take away what we stand to know and if that's why we do these type of studies is because if you see the study for yourself and you're involved in it and you can see the scriptures and the ruach is is speaking to you whenever this comes up next time you're going to know and it's not going to shake your foundation. It's not going to take you and lead you off the path because it's going to be settled within you. And I'm praying that that's what these studies have done for us, you know, and our discussions, because it's important. It really is a foundation important because I see it. If, if we have this belief and we lose it, we start to get, we get, we really lose and have confusion in our lives because now the scriptures really don't have a lot of meaning and focus to us because if we discount it, no matter what part of it that we discount on the book, the whole book, all of the books, each individual one that's there, you know, if you start discounting them, it's a, it's a very slippery slope and it's very dangerous, you know, and we can only help so much as men, you know, to help bring somebody back from that, you know, especially if they're settled in their mind that this is what they believe, you know, so this is a warning to those that we come against this and, and may try to be led down that path. That's all I want to bring that caution. That's all. Because I see that's a very dangerous place for us to live. All righty, brother JP, are you with us? Got a couple of things here. There you are over there. Shalom, shalom, my family. Brother, you know, you hey, you know I'm with you. What you mean? I, come on. Look, I, you got on the other page. I didn't see the JP man. I didn't see <laughs> I'm I'm always on time, but never late. You know. <laughs> uh, hallelujah! Now I love the discussion already. You know, it's it beautiful uh, what Brother Rod talked about the branch. I was I was thinking the same thing when when I was hearing the study the branch. I was like, oh man, that was a hard one right there. You know, it's a deep word, and what Brother Jadiel was speaking on too. Um, I, I it just it just reflects. I just reflect back on what you're speaking on and I, I get excited i was getting excited more so than anything because i'm just like wow like you know because this whole week i was just speaking with another brother and we were talking about something and and it was just like the light of messiah was like this covering that we have and i i, I was just like telling my wife and we were talking last night and and uh, we had the sister over and i was like like there was a time when they had to have these Levites go in and, and speak for them and, and be that mediator in a sense, you know, and, and now that's, there's no more of that. And now I'm like, I got the Messiah, like the Messiah is coming in and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to the father and the Messiah is there with me, like as the, my covering. Like how excited I get always just excited because I'm just like, this is like amazing. Like when you see the truth, you you can't get away from that. You know, what I mean? you can't get away from that. You can go back if you want, you know, and and, you know, we see that there is a culture in Judaism that they're looking at it in that other old way of saying this is how. But there's like. But then when I, I see the fulfillment of what we're talking about, I'm like, man, this is amazing. And, and what you brothers are speaking about, the fear of, I guess it always comes back to what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? Like, what if these people like in Judaism are wrong? 
like shouldn't they fear like that they have went against you know yahuwah like the scripture says you know even in the book of acts when they were like if we fight against him we're fighting against elohim like <laughs> what are you like and so just kind of it's encouraging it's encouraging and uplifting to me because i'm like i i get ex it's just another week of it was just another week of my life of being like wow like i'm covered you know you know these things but to to just i don't know just to be the ruach must have been the one just like giving me this remembrance you know what i mean and and through that you know the all of what you're showing um the fulfillments of prophecy or or and and i love what the brother jadiel brought out like it's like these prophecies that will show like even us going through something. And, and it's like the way that Yahuwah speaks is perfect. His word is so perfect that you just can't really try to box it in and you can't make it what you want to make it, you know? So a lot going on in my mind, of course, as you see what I'm saying, I'm talking about different things. <laughs> But but the covering is is the most important and that I, I was just like excited about and excited to hear in those uh, breakdowns, um, just the fulfillment, like that's all I keep thinking about the covering. Like I, I'm just, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I was changed. I'm a new man. You know what I'm saying? I'm made new. Like, like there's no way to, there's no way to go back and look and say, this this was not no i'm like no this is and brother johnny I, I, I was man i was talking with him and and it was stuff like that and just like i made new i made new and i can only give it to mashiach and what he's done and that cleansing and that's my testimony so it, it comes by amuna you know even if people say all oh, that i say i don't even it just comes by amuna i'm like i don't you know what my faith is already sealed. I'm here. Like, I'm I'm just going. So, anyways, hallelujah. I'm going to stop here. <laughs> shalom, Mishpaka, Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I can see the excitement, and I and it makes me excited that you're excited. That we're all getting excited, you know, and then we're covered. You're right. That, that covering is important. You know, you're dismantling so much of your faith if you disregard what the the the, uh, the the Brit has set, is telling us, you know, you really are. You know, I understand that you you know there's 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 a lot of false teachings out there and people misinterpreting things, you know, and not connecting things properly. That just tells me that the ruach's not leading them. You know, if you can't see these oh, things, then it's quite clear to me that that's where you're at. Um, you know, and I I just want to, you know, just want to say. You know, I'm with you, brother. I am excited about this too. You know, th this this kind of study just brings you right back into your foundation, because this is really the matter of it all. You know, we know that Yahuwah has a great plan, and if we don't believe that He has done this, and that He isn't behind this, and that He that the 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 the, the bread is false, and He's allowing all of these people to to just be led astray that easy. When, you know, we're studying this thing, it, we're, we're not just being gullible here. We're actually putting some effort into trying to find out, is this true? And is this the Mashiach? Does he fit the prophecies that are spoken of? Because if you don't believe the prophecies that are revealed to you in the Tanakh, and you can't see the fulfillment, then there's a, there's a disconnect somewhere. It's, you know, there's just, I don't see how you can't see it when there's so much fulfillment. Just, it's overwhelming. Brother Rod? Yeah, yeah. I mean, JP, thank you, brother, because you, you reminded me of something um, that Jadiel said when he said, the question is okay. And, and I'm going to tell you something, JP, I know exactly what you're talking about when you said this week, you know, you were renewed, you know, because, you know, this week I'm preparing something for this afternoon, a special study, you know, specifically looking at how we look at scripture, how we read it, how we study it, how we understand prophecy, interpret it. And there were some questions in my mind that I had that I would, that were unresolved that I didn't even know I had when I started looking at scriptures. And I'm just like, 
it can be troubling. But the, the, the faith in the Ruach to show you is what you depend on. So that, so that you know that your faith is sure, that you know your faith is secure. That is so important because the question, the question has revived, the idea of there being a question has even revitalized, you know, not just you, JP, but the three elders, you know, to examine some things even further and deeper, you know, some things that we just assume are answered in the New Testament or the Brit Hadashah, but we don't really see it. We just trust it. But he says, no, this is, this is, and then around he says, this is, a, a child can understand this. Slow down, take your time, read the language, see what the words mean, and I will show you what I'm saying. And when you do that, you, the, the, the secrets uh, that, that, that blind you are revealed through him. You know, and, you know, I just wanted to let everybody know it is fine to have a question. It is fine to be shaken a little bit. Scripture tells you you're going to be shaken. But it says don't fall, don't wither, don't blow up away like a leaf. Hold sturdy, plant yourself by the water where the trees get their nourishment to be built up. You know, it doesn't tell you what not to do unless there's a reason for him saying that. There's a reason that the warnings are there because human nature is to get shaky, to get weary at the moment of weakness or question. Mind you that all of these things, these people are going through and the things that they're hearing from here, from there, from this set, from that set, it's all written in scripture for our knowing, for our understanding, for our growth and for our foundation and trust in him. So ask the questions, <laughs> you know, that's why we got the Friday Q and A you know, that Brother Jadiel is running through so, so, so vividly. The, 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 the studies we go through, the women's study, the, the, the studies that we have, you know, on Shabbat, going through verse by verse, making sure that we're reading it properly and seeing what it says. So we're going to do this together. Praise God. We are in assembly. Hallelujah. That's exciting in itself, you know, that you're not alone in this, because that could be really really troubling if you're out here and don't have anybody to bounce stuff off and uh, to ask questions to and to, to dig into this stuff together, you know. Um, to me, that's the another serious baraka of being part of the, the body of Yahusha, you know. I mean, we're all brought together. And I agree with you. You, you said something, Brother Jadiel, that really triggered something. I've been changed. I didn't change myself. You know, people can say they can been changed, but I was a, I walked a Christian my whole life. I understand what it is to to walk in those shoes, and when I walked into these new shoes, things changed for me. I, it was almost like I went from playing, even though I wasn't. But when I when I when I got a hold of this truth and it really got planted in me, which I believe He planted His Word inside of me, just like the Scripture says. Because it's in there. It's alive. It's drawing me. It inspires me to want to know more. And to me, that is what's important because it has transformed my being, my thinking. You know, without the, the, the clarification that we get in the, in the Brit, some of the stuff is still kind of confusing to us. You know, there's a lot of people out there that don't understand the, the Torah, you know, what it's saying. Because they're stuck in the New Testament and the Brit too, so it goes both ways. We need the whole of Scripture to, to settle the matter, you know. And that's why it's so beautiful about this assembly, is because when these kind of questions, these troubling questions, believe me, this isn't no light matter, you know. When you got people that are are changing their whole belief systems over this, you gotta you gotta get serious and say, okay, is there merit here? You know, if not, we gotta we gotta put up some warnings. We gotta bring we gotta help sound the alarm. Look, hell, you know, something's wrong here. You know, there's there's trouble in the camp. And if it's pulling people away that are of the faith, then we have to take the responsibility to stand up and say, here's what the scripture says. You know, if you're looking at it from uh, from the Brit going backwards and you're trying to trying to fit in and say, well, it says that it, this must be done to fulfill what was written like it's a cover or something no it's a confirmation you know that this is what this is about so you can tie the two together so you know this is a big learning lesson for all of us you know and i'm thankful that i have my fellow elders and yourself brother jp that 
we can turn to, you know, believe me, these difficult matters. I wouldn't want to be one man called a pastor that has to figure all this out and try to take all this on your shoulders. I got, I got two other shoulders or three other shoulders to, 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 to carry this load. And believe me, we've come together. We've discussed this matter. We've studied this matter together. And I think it's pretty much settled within the elders that this is the problem. And this is the, this is also the, the, the cure, you know, study it, lay it out and let's let it speak for itself. At that point, you know, if you still can't believe it, then you got to examine yourself and your position, you know, because it should be settled in my opinion. So praise you. Go ahead, brother. Rod. Yeah. June has a statement, but she can't raise her hand. She signed in as Oh, well. so you can let Brother Donnie go first. He had his hand up. Oh, okay. You're muted, Brother Rick. Yep, somebody muted me. <laughs> that, that mute's been going on all day. Somebody trying to quiet me, trying to shut me down. <laughs> Brother Rod. <laughs> I was just kidding. Brother John, uh, Donnie Williams. Shabbat shalom, brother. Shabbat shalom, baby. Oh, sorry, I just muted you just like brother. Uh, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> uh, can you hear me now? I can. Go ahead. Okay, praise y'all. Uh, due to respect of the the lady of the house, Um, I will go after Sister June. Hallelujah. I will wait and go after Sister. Give up most respect to what she's going to say. Praise y'all. There you go, Sister June. Oh, well, you're very kind. <laughs> um, Shabbat Shalom. I just had a really quick, quick comment. I was just sitting here marveling about like the purpose of prophecy. Like, why is there even prophecy to begin with? Like, why and, and so many, like, why is it included? And I think, um, I mean, this is just speculation, but you know, I perhaps the father anticipated or knew our unbelief and that we would need to see these things lined up and to give us hope to know what was coming up. And so it's just, it's just so wonderful when you just think on <laughs> just the father's design, you know, with creation and the prophecies and just the whole, everything is, it's, I've, I've really, I, I'm learning so much and it's, I'm just so grateful to be at this place in, in my walk. And um, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much for the message as always, because I echo my hubby's comments that we know it takes a lot to study and compile and put these things together for us to, you know, look at and discuss together. So Shabbat Shalom, praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's, uh, it's good that you're able to see these things and that it does bring some comfort to you, which it really should, you know. Um, that's where we're at in this place and I'm very thankful too, quite honestly, you know. Without you guys and uh, being able to walk together in this and be able to discuss things freely and openly and not be ashamed to take questions or, or scared what questions might come up, you know these are important to all of us and our, our beliefs, you know, going forward. And once this matter is settled, it's never going to be a problem again. And so, you know, that's why I believe you're right. I think he puts so many confirmations of these things that it's, it's hard to discount them. I mean, if you only had one or two prophecies that spoke of something, you know, it'd be easy to, to overlook it and say, well, maybe, maybe not, but man, there's so much, it's overwhelming. It's, it, you can't just disregard it and say, mm, I don't know if I believe it. You got you to discount a lot of prophecies that's been fulfilled, that we can see fulfilled, you know. So, you know, it, it makes it comfort for those that are trusting in the word to be right and that it's, it is giving us an accurate description of who we're supposed to be believing in and looking for as a Mashiach, you know. You know, we still hear people coming in. They still got to know that you can look to this Mashiach that's been sent on our behalf to help us. So 
I, I, I just, I'm thankful for him. I say Toto Rava Yahusha for coming and loving us enough to do these things. Hallelujah. All righty, brother Donnie, the gentleman you are, you are now up. Uh, praise Yahuwah. Uh, first, give honor to the Most High Yah, your son Yahusha Mashiach. Uh, another powerful message that you allow the Mashiach to speak through you again, Elder Richard. I, I appreciate it and I receive it. Um, when I was in Christianity, hallelujah, and begin to read and study, I never seen it as Mashiach in the beginning of Genesis when the Most High created. And he said, I was there. Uh, he was not there in the flesh at the time, but he was in there at Ruach. And when I got to the understanding, he made all things through his son, by his son. And he passed all things down to his son. But while he was not in flesh and in the Ruach, prophecy came about through different ones. And different people didn't believe the different prophets or the priests that prophesied the words of the Most High Yah. And then it came to the point to where then he had recreated Mashiach in flesh. So praise God, I really opened my eyes up. Yes, he exists. He exists in me. And I pray for those that don't believe he exists because they can become danger to their souls. They can really blaspheme because when you talk about the Mashiach and you don't believe the Mashiach, you're talking about the father who created all mankind, who created his son in, in our flesh. So praise y'all for the understanding and praise y'all for you elders, praise y'all for this assembly, the sisters and the brothers. And we all in a learning process. A lot of things that we didn't know and understand by leaning to our own understanding was not revealed to us. And praise y'all, he's revealing himself through his son, Yahushua Mashiach, to us. Praise y'all. Praise y'all, hallelujah. You know, it's awesome when you think about how he's done this. You know, Yahushua is the word that was spoken in the very beginning. So he is the, the, the Torah, the Tanakh. He is the prophecy that is all about him. If you take him out of this equation, you're taking away your faith. You're taking away the, 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 the really the, the basis or the rock or the foundation of the, of the whole Torah. You know, you can't disconnect him. You know, that's what the Brit does for us. It allows us to look back through the Torah and to be able to see him there to see all of the things that he's done there. And that's the beautiful thing when you can look back and, and you don't see him when you're in the mist. The prophets and all of that didn't know the Mashiach. You know, they didn't know of all of this. But when you get to the Brit and you can look back and you can see his footsteps, you can see his fingerprints, you can see that he was involved from the very beginning of creation all the way through to the moment that he gave his life and established a new covenant that you and I could believe. And he put that Ruach his Ruach, the, the Ruach in his name, uh, the, you know, the, the Father sent on his behalf, on his authority, all those things are what changed us. And without him, without all of this, we must just walk away and go back into the world too, quite honestly. Because we see the Tanakh, the people that walked in the Tanakh, there wasn't very many people in the Tanakh that walked in righteousness. That's the thing that's missing there. If you look back, and and they were all scattered because they couldn't uh, they couldn't walk it out. They couldn't follow this in their flesh. That's why Yahusha had to come. He had to establish this for us so that he could help us to do the things that we aren't able to do. We had to. He had to come and put his bring the Father before us to return us back to the Father where we were we were dispersed. We were separated from him because of the sin in our lives. It's not that hard for me to comprehend and see all that the Messiah has done for me and all the confirmation that's been given. The Father went to a lot of extent to prove who his Mashiach would be when he comes so that those that would understand his word would recognize who he is. You know, there was a few of them that recognized it when he came because they were studying what the prophecies were speaking about them, you know? So we're in a position, we got a better, we got hindsight 2020 and, and, you know, where we can look back and we can see it all with a wide view and a wide lens and a narrow view and a narrow lens where we can really 
dissect this really good, better than any other generation. So to me, this is settled in my mind. So Brother Jadiel, what you got for us? Are you there? There you are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's a few there's a few um, verses that I wanted to just uh, bring out. Uh, Deuteronomy, I believe it's Deuteronomy chapter 30. I think it's talking in, in verse uh, verse 11, I believe. Let me let me pull it up. Um, yeah, verse 11 and 12. Uh, it says this. It says. Um, well, of verse 11 to 14, it says, for this is a commandment which I command you this day. <clears throat> it is not difficult for you. Neither is it far away. It is not in the Shamayim that you should say who shall go up for us to the Shamayim and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. If you notice, it says that we may hear it and then do it. It says, neither is beyond the sea that you should say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near to you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. See, with things that we, we think that we could read the scriptures and then that makes it in our heart and in our mouth. No, that's not what puts it in you. See, they want to know, let's hear it so we can do it. Let's hear it so we can say it. No, it's near. It's supposed to be in your mouth and in your heart so you can do it. So Moshe has always suggested it's never just do it. It's never just say it. It's, Father, put it in me so I can do it. Put it in my mouth, in my heart. That's what he told Joshua. He says, I will put the words in. That's what he told Moses. I will give you the words. I will, I made your mouth. I will put it in you so you can do it, so you can say it. <clears throat> so we have to get out of this mindset that if we read the scriptures, that's what's putting it in your hearts. No, is if we have a munah, if you believe in the scriptures, then Yahuwah will circumcise your heart with his word. Then he will put it in your heart. It doesn't work any other way, and it has always worked that way. And I love what June, Sister June brought up, where she was like, prophecy is like that that extra layer that Yahuwah did not have to do. <laughs> he could have just said, listen, walk this way. But he said, I'm going to put so many things in front of you that you won't doubt so you have something to trust in. So you have something to look forward to. You know, I, I, it's just amazing. And it reminded me of a verse that I want to read in Ecclesiastes, which pertains to prophecy. When you listen to prophecy, it's talking about circumstances, situations, events that has occurred. So Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse nine, is very clear on prophecy is very clear on, on what happens on this earth. It says here, um, the thing that has, this is Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse nine. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. There is nothing new there is no new thing under the sun. So whatever is in the past is going to happen again. And whatever happened, it has happened already before. So to the idea that prophecy is just stuck in one place in time is not scriptural. Everything. We have in Revelation a reference of Egypt. We have a rev a, in Revelation a reference of Babylon. It takes us back to show that all of the pollutions of these nations will arise again in the same way. This persecution that has happened, what did Messiah say? Just as the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Just as the days of Lot, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So the idea to look at prophecy and say is stuck in time 
and cannot be brought to reality in a different moment in time, we'll, can't, we'll have to cancel out this verse and the ideas that they had, you know, the, 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 the looking forward to, they look forward to, to something that was going to, to do this, you know, to fulfill everything that was said, not part of it. They may have felt that joy seeing part of it fulfilled, but they knew when everything was not completed that they continued to wait. They continued to wait, you know, so we have to, we have to recognize immaturity. Like prophecy is supposed to reapply because it's supposed to remind us what has been. And when we study what has been, it gives us confidence and it gives us direction as to what to do now because it's happening now and it's going to happen in the future. <laughs> and how do we learn about how to deal with the future? We read scriptures about the past <laughs> so we could know how to deal with the future. Why? Because it's reapplying in our history and we need to just, we need to be, when we look at that, it's, it's, it's extremely important because um, this is what he gave us these words for this like sister june said this is why he gave us prophecy to comfort us to tell us beforehand so we can have comfort in 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 what yah is definitely going to do why because he did it before he delivered us from egypt already before how can he not do it now he parted the red sea before how can he not do it now you know, so this is what prophecy is supposed to do for us. And sorry, sorry, because this is is it's, it's it's crazy because this is our faith. This is how we walk. He did it for them. He will do it again for us. So why the confusion about reapplying what's happening now? We're saying for us. Now we're not even saying for Messiah. He's going to do it again for us. That means he's going to do, he's, you know, he prophesied he would do this for us. So guess who else is in prophecy? We are in prophecy because he said, I will deliver my people. Who's my people? We are. So we are in prophecy and he will fulfill his prophecy in us, in our life. You know, so we have to accept this because this is, without this, there's this, is nothing, man. Is I'm so afraid for these people. I'm so afraid because there's nothing else. You have to, like what Brother Rick said, you have to, little by little, give everything else up because it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work, you know. So praise Yah that He's made it extremely clear, simple, like what Brother Rod said, for a child to understand. So we don't we don't have to boast ourselves up about how smart we are. Let's be children <laughs> and let's take the simplistic, the simplest, I don't even know if I'm using that word right. Let's take this, the most simple approach to scripture. This is it. This is it. I believe. Father, show me, help me to understand what I believe so I won't discard what's true. You know, this has to be our prayer, you know, every time we approach the word. So praise y'all. Man, that stuff's getting me excited. All I know, there's a lot of good stuff being spoken here, and there's a lot of revelation. Thank you, Brother Jadiel, for bringing out those points. It's amazing when when it's broken down and laid out before you like that, how how simplistic it is, really. Uh, it's If it's going to, like you said, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen again. We can trust in it. We, you know... We're given this stuff so it, it strengthens us, so it prepares us and readies us for what's coming. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Joseph and Francia, you up, and then I'm coming to you, Sister Danielle. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to give a little testimony about all this. I, I never grew up in Christianity. I wasn't religious at all. I actually was you might say an atheist for a long time so one of my struggles was always faith so when I came to this walk uh, I tried so hard for everything to make sense and it it's not gonna happen and one of the things that we need to let go to stop relying on, on our own understanding to stop relying on our brains or our intellect because at the end of the day that's our flesh 
And many things that Yahuwah has done throughout the whole history doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't make any sense that a raven fed Elijah. It doesn't make any sense that Daniel didn't burn the furnace. It doesn't make any sense that it, it rained uh, bread for the people in, in the wilderness. So part of our submission is to trust Yahuwah and know that he can do whatever he wants as he please. And that we are not going to understand many things. But as children, that like Brother Yadiyat said, we, we need to trust him blindly. And the verse, the verse that came to my mind was Hebrews 11.1. 1. Uh, now belief is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that's what I wanted to, to say. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And thank you. Them some words of wisdom. For, and I appreciate you uh, sharing those with us. You know, it comes down to that, really. It's just uh, those things are really simplistic. And sometimes we overcomplicate things. So thank you again. Sister Danielle. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. So happy to be here. Um, I think Sister June brought up um, something that just kind of reminded me of my own journey. And, you know, um, please forgive me. I am like a brand new born again. So um, I just started, um, I was doing a hundred day juice fast and I was praying <laughs> and I just saw what was happening in the world and I needed to turn to the scriptures and um, my mom had been trying to get me to read the Bible for 15 years, not just because she was worried about my salvation, but um, I was traveling all over the world, bowing down to idols, going to India, learning yoga, I was studying shamanism and breath work. And um, I was pretty good at it. I, uh, you know, I was, I practiced Freemasonry as the master of the lodge and other <laughs> things, having no idea what I was doing. Um, until I sat down and read the scriptures and, you know, all these things for over 20 years, I was making six figures selling, you know, spiritual <laughs> items to people <laughs> and teaching them how to meditate for like 20 years. <laughs> and I had no idea the things that I was doing. And, you know, I think like what Sister June is talking about with the prophecy and, and these scriptures, because, um, I mean, I had, a, I had a community, I had a tribe of like thousands of people and I read these scriptures and I saw these things and I thought these people who I had been, you know, teaching and preaching to in my own way, um, you know, something was always missing until I read the scriptures and then I read the scriptures and it was like, this, this is not just applying to you know, history, which also in college, I studied history and have a degree in history. This is not just going to history. This is, this is applying to my everyday life. And since August, I've, I buried myself in the scriptures and I, I have about 300 pages left. <laughs> um, I mean, I've read almost the entire thing since August and every day that I read it, it's like more and more and more truth come into me and i i realized that i mean other than the salvation of, of eternity to to be with yahuwah and and these other great you know believers and leaders and people that you know we can we can look after like abraham and and um other than that like i've lost my entire like my entire life is gone like I, everything that I had known before August is gone. Every single friend, <laughs> um, everything, everything in my life is, is, has been taken. And yet I've never been more at peace. I've never been happier. I've never, I've never felt like I had the answers in my hand, but it's like this, this, this tiny silver thread, I feel like you have to pass into this, this, this tiny little glowing silver thread of like, to put yourself into that place, you know, and, um, my, my, my spouse whom I live with, he is totally deep into Satanism. <laughs> and, um, I, I, tr he, he's reading the scriptures, but I try to tell him, like, imagine that no one would choose this because 
it is living in a in an alignment of righteousness that you would never want to give up all the things in your life that you're doing to put yourself into that but the way that the way that Yahuwah has put these words in here and I know you guys know this but I am like brand new so I mean this is like revelations for me coming in right um you have to put yourself into this place of submission that why would you do that? Because like when I was out living the life of like traveling all over to India and Mexico and Canada, just going to all these workshops and making all these great friends and love and light, namaste brothers and sisters, you know, like when I was living that life, like no, there was no accountability. There was no personal accountability. There was no, there was no, um, like line, like my friends would celebrate, oh, you're doing this sinful act. Oh, that's just great. But now that I'm reading the scriptures, they're like, I want to have nothing to do with me. You know, as long as I was sinning, they would like praise all of that. So I feel like, you know, these prophecies that are in here are more than, they're more than just a prophecy. It's, for me, it's made me align my life in such a way that, that I know that when I put my, my, my next foot in front of the other, that I am being totally guided and totally led. And, and I feel like something, you know, Yahuwah wants me to see these things because if he wanted my, my spouse or he wanted my friends to see these things, they would see them. And so a part of me, like, doesn't want to give up on them. Like my mom, like praying for me, right. Praying for her children that they would turn. But, um, like I, I do pray for them, but I also feel a sense of, I have a personal accountability for me to follow these scriptures and to trust these prophecies and to trust in the words that are here. But I actually don't, I actually, it's not my job to turn them. Yes, it's my job to share my testimony with them, but it gives me a sense of relief that I don't have to save them, <laughs> that like Yahuwah is going to save them, Yahushua is going to save them, their prophecies are here. If they want the information, you know, you just have to open up the scriptures because it's a, it's like, it's you open the scriptures and you get a relationship that I don't know, you guys know better than me, but I'm just trying to say that, like, I don't know, Sister June, whatever you said, and then Brother Jadiel, when you were sharing, it just made me like it brought a lot together for me to to see that, you know, Yahuwah puts a blindness over people so that they can't see. So he also removes that blindness. And I'm just grateful that he removed that blindness and and, and yes, when I do come to the scriptures, it, it is with reverence. I, it is with prayer. It is with, you know, with a submission to, to be reformed and renewed and, and to, to give myself over and to change all of that. But not because the prophecy is like somewhere out there, but the prophecy is happening within me now today. So that was really long, but yeah. Um, I don't share that much because I feel brand new, but I also feel like I have, you know, 30 years of, of, even though I wasn't worshiping Yahuwah, I've known his name for 15 years. So when I was praying and when I was bowing down, I was using his name, which I was totally committing spiritual adultery, but I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> but, um, but it's just, I just feel like there's no other truth in the world. Like this whole world is this empty lie and there's nothing really worth living for other than his word here so Ooh, anyway <laughs> hallelujah thank you i mean you you all are helping me grow and mature in my walk and i just am really grateful grateful so much for you well we're grateful for you too and we're <laughs> thankful for you and your sharing uh thank you for opening up and sharing that that definitely helps a lot of us justify and see things even in our own lives so so thank you for that. Uh, you've been in quite a journey in your life and you who has got a great journey ahead of you. So it excites me that you're digging in and you said some very key things about being obedient and surrendering and all of those things are important, but allowing these, you know, the, the word to speak to you and to change you and transform you. Praise Yahuwah for Danielle. Hallelujah. All right, brother Ty Tyrone, you got the last word. Shalom, 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 everyone. Wow, just hearing all this, man, like you said, it it gets me excited, and I'm so thankful. Uh, everybody said so many things that has just opened my mind up. You know, the, the Ruach is just 
like bam, bam, bam. And the last thing that Sister Danielle said about the spiritual blindness and the Father just revealed to me, sometimes he may cause a spiritual blindness around the people who are trying to get to see the truth. But he's also trying to get us to draw closer to him because he's preparing us for something even greater that we cannot see. I'm like, oh, wow, that simple, Father. Oh, I missed it all the time. And he says, yes. He says, sometimes I'm going to use people. And then he has. He has used a lot of people around me to get me where I am. And I'm seeing that more and more as I draw closer to him. But some of the things I wanted to bring out that the Father has revealed to me as we were speaking real quickly is that how can you say that you love Yeshua, you love Yahuwah, if you don't know him? And he tells us in his scriptures and everything, you know, we need to draw close to him. He will draw close to us. And when you were talking about earlier, Brother Rick, you know, like he says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child and I thought as a child. And as we grow older, we see who the father is and we start putting away those childish things. And we start, you know, uh, he starts revealing us even more and more and we grow and grow. And that truth, you know, it, it just, you know, we want to seek out even more and more. And as Sister June was talking about, it brought a scripture, John 13, 19. I'm telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. So we see that, you know, he tells us right here, you know, he, he wants us to know and want us to understand. So he has to fulfill these prophecies to give us understanding, to show who he is. How can I believe that he is the Messiah if he did not fulfill those things that he said he was going to do? How can I believe in future prophecies if he has not done those things? So as we set ourselves apart and we study these things, we start seeing we have to. We were going to ask these questions like Brother Rod said. We're going to ask these questions. I ask them all the time. I said, Father, reveal yourself. Show me if I'm on the right walk, if I'm doing these things right. And I tell you what, I have been blessed beyond, you know, I was revealing to uh, Brother Johnny, he has blessed me so much because I've turned away from the world. I've set myself apart and he has challenged me left and right over and over and he has not failed me once. So I know that this walk is right. This word is right. So if man did it, I'm like, well, how is all this other spiritual things, how are all these blessings coming upon me by keeping and doing the commandments and walking in this truth? What I mean, Man cannot do that. Only a most high Elohim has the power to do that. So I'm a witness to his power, his strength, that his word is true. It does not come back void, like he says. So praise to the most high for this teaching and the brethren here, man, the sisters. Oh, wow. I'm fired up. I'm fired up to get even deeper into this, to draw even closer to the most high. Hallelujah. Well, keep fired up, brother, because we got another section coming in the afternoon that's going to blow your socks off. Oh, I'm going to be here for this one. Brother Rod got me interested. He just, my ears like perked, but he said, I'm like, yeah. no, I said, I'm going to spend time today in this. Uh, I could do the other stuff I'm going to do later. We could put that aside. Hallelujah. Well, with that being said, thank everybody for your input. Your, your, your comments have been amazing, uh, enlightening, and I just think the Father for this day and this study, and may he continue to brock you and keep you. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Akuti, and Rohim. Thank you so much for viewing this video. We hope it was helpful to your walk in the truth. Remember to always search the scriptures on your own, to study Abba's word, and show yourself approved according to 2 Timothy 2.15. We invite you to study with us. To join us in a live study, just go to our website at assemblyofyahuwah.com and click the Join Us tab. We have something available Wednesday through Saturday of every week. If you've been Baruch or blessed by this video today or any other study, we encourage you to go to the Giving tab on our website. Our elders all have their own ways of income, so none of the giving or proceeds go to them. Instead, it goes to biblical assembly needs. We also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any new videos. We sincerely pray that Abba continues to direct your path as you acknowledge Him in all your ways. Much Avaha 
and again, Shalom.